Hey guys, it's Miss Butcher here, and this video is for 8.2, Graphing Simple Rational Functions. This is going to be a video with a quiz with quizzes embedded into it. You can't skip forward in this video. You can rewind and, and watch things over again, but you're not going to be able to just skip to the questions, so don't even try. All right. All right. So the general form of a rational function, rational means fraction. And so it's just f of x equals p of x being some polynomial divided by q of x, another polynomial. So just a polynomial divided by a polynomial, kind of like we did with the long division yesterday. Um, and then it says uh, q of x does not equal 0 because we can't divide by 0. And that's very important for um, when we're going to graph our rational functions. All right, so the rational parent function, the most basic rational function we can deal with, is y equals 1 over x. And as we just said, you cannot divide by 0. So x can't be 0. Let's write that down. x can't be 0. That means that everywhere along the y-axis, we will not have a graph. So what that means is we're going to have an asymptote. And we dealt with asymptotes when we did... Um, when we did exponential functions and logarithmic functions. So we're going to have a vertical asymptote at x equals 0. And we're going to sketch that into our graph every single time. Whenever we have a rational function, you just take whatever's in the denominator, set it equal to 0, and that's what x cannot be. So we're going to have a dashed line at x equals 0. So right here, I know it's kind of hard to see, but dash it in anyway. All right, so we have a vertical asymptote there. Now, if you think about 1 over x, and if you made a table for values, um, if x was 1, y would be 1, because 1 over 1 is 1. If x was 2, y would be 1 over 2, 1 half. If x was 3, y would be 1 third, and it just gets smaller and smaller as x gets larger. It approaches that asymptote. Um, we also, as x gets smaller, if I had x as 1 half, 1 divided by a half is 2. If x was 1 third, 1 divided by a third is 3. Um, but if you look at this, y will never equal 0. There is nothing that we can plug in for x that will give us a y value of 0. Because if we plugged in a 0 for x, then we would get an undefined thing. So y can't equal 0 either. y can't equal 0 either. That means that we have a horizontal asymptote. And from now on, I'm going to abbreviate these with VA and HA. But we have a horizontal asymptote at y equals 0. So that means, sketch that in along the x-axis. So our two asymptotes happen to fall on the axes now. The rest of the graph we can plot just by looking at our table that we've already made here. So we've got a point at 1, 1. We've got a point at 2, 1 half. 3, 1 third. 4, 1 fourth. And 1 fifth, 1 sixth. So it's approaching but never touching this asymptote. And then when x was 1 half, y was 2. 1 third was 3. And so on. It looks exactly the same on this side. Now, if you were to plug in the negative x's, if x was negative 1, I'm just going to use the same chart, then y would be 1 over negative 1 is negative 1. Negative 2 would be negative 1 half, and so all of these would just be the opposites. So we have negative 1, negative 1 here, negative 2, negative 1 half, and so it just approaches the asymptote from underneath here, and it's approaching like that. So we have this graph that in the end is going to look like this. We call that a hyperbola, and it's, it's got two branches. And you can get your graphing calculator. You can go to y equals, put 1 over x, and you'll see this. It'll look just like this in the calculator. Um, it will be a hyperbola with two branches approaching x equals 0 and y equals 0, but never touching them. And then the other important thing we need to talk about with these graphs are domain and range. So for your domain, and I'm just going to use a D, X exists everywhere to the left, everywhere, 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 except 0. And then it picks right back up after 0 and goes on to infinity. So we just say negative infinity to 0 
with a union of 0 to infinity. And I'm sorry about the crowdedness on the page here, but that's all right. You'll live. So negative infinity to 0 and 0 to infinity. You don't have to put the u. Um, some people do and some people don't. All right, our range for the y values starts down here at negative infinity, always, always up here, and then stops at 0, can't equal 0, so negative infinity to 0 again, and then 0 to infinity. So if you notice, wherever your asymptote is, is what your break is in your domain and range. All right, so now I've made a mess of this page. Let's try another example. All right, when you're graphing your rational functions, the translations that we've been talking about all year apply here too. So if I had an another, a number other than 1 on top, that would be our a value. That's going to be your stretch or shrink. If we add or subtract something in, in there in the denominator with x, that's going to be your horizontal shift. And if we add something after the function, that will be your vertical shift. So really, the most important thing to know about this is what's going to change is your asymptotes. If I shifted this graph horizontally, then the vertical asymptote would move. So h changes your vertical asymptote. Um, vertical asymptote at x equals h. And then if I shifted it up or down, up or down, then the horizontal asymptote's what would move. And so the k value affects your horizontal asymptote. And the horizontal asymptote, since it was at 0, it's now at y equals k. So look at this one. We have y equals negative 6 over x plus 3 and then plus 2. So we know the negative is going to reflect it over the x-axis. And all that means is that instead of having a hyperbola like this, we'll have a hyperbola like this. Okay, the 6 just means it's going to be stretched out by 6, but that doesn't really matter to what we're doing right now. What matters is this plus 3 and this plus 2. The x plus 3, that's going to shift our vertical asymptote over to the left 3 units. Remember, plus 3 with the x goes left 3. I'm going to write that down, shift left 3. Oh, this uh, the stylus is hard to write with, sorry. But it shifts left 3. That means that our vertical asymptote was at x equals 0, but now it's at x equals negative 3. And you can also figure that out by taking the denominator and saying, I'm not allowed to divide by 0. So if I said x plus 3 equals 0, x would have to be negative 3. And that's the location of your vertical asymptote. So I'm going to put a vertical asymptote at x equals negative 3. So that's our vertical asymptote right there. All right, then the plus 2 shifts it up to shift up 2. So your horizontal asymptote, which was at y equals 0, is now shifted up to y equals 2. So our horizontal asymptote is at y equals 2. So now we have a hyperbola with our asymptotes um, not on the axes, but we still have a horizontal and a vertical. So the rest of the graph you can just use, uh, make a table. You can use your calculator, get points off the calculator, and we'll have points at negative 9, 3 is a good point. Um, negative 6, 4 is another really good point to use. I just, I'm looking at the table in my calculator and pulling out the whole number of points. Negative 5, 5 is a good point. Um, negative 4, 8. And so that gives you a good enough idea of what this branch is doing. We also need the other side, though. So um, I know at negative 3, my calculator says error. That's because there's an asymptote there. At negative 2, we have y is negative 4. Negative 1 is negative 1. 0, 0 is a point here. And then um, we go with 3, 1. And that's enough, um, really, to show that it is approaching that asymptote and approaching this asymptote, just like that, with arrows on the end, because it does keep going. So there's our graph. We've got the most important parts. We've got the vertical asymptote, the horizontal asymptote. And then if we were to give it a domain and range, 
the domain is negative infinity until it hits the asymptote at negative 3, and then picks back up again after negative 3 and goes on to infinity. And of course I didn't leave room for my range. Okay, we'll write it little. The range is negative infinity, and it goes up until it hits the asymptote. This one is at 2, and then it picks up at 2 and goes on to infinity. All right. Okay, so in case you were wondering, all that noise in the background is my dog. She's playing with some stuff on the wood floor, so I apologize for that. All right, we also can do other rational functions. So far, we've graphed a couple where it was just a single number on top and then something with just x or x plus something in the bottom. Um, we can also have something where we have a linear on top and a linear on bottom, y equals ax plus b over cx plus d. We can have lots of other things too, but let's talk about this next. So when we have this situation, once again, you cannot divide by zero. So all you have to do to find your vertical asymptote is set the denominator equal to zero. So we just say cx plus d, whatever those numbers happen to be, equals zero, and we would solve for x. So in this case, it would be negative d over c. But you don't have to memorize that with the letters. Just know set the denominator equal to zero to get your vertical asymptote. And then as far as your horizontal asymptote, it's different. When it was 1 over x, it was always going to be at 0, um, y equals 0. When you have a single x on top and bottom, then what you do for your horizontal asymptote, so this is important to write this down, the horizontal asymptote is going to be the ratio of the coefficient on this x to the coefficient on that x, a over c. So if it was 2x on top and 3x on bottom, it'd be 2 thirds, y equals 2 thirds. Whatever that ratio happens to be, that's where your horizontal asymptote is going to go. All right, so let's practice. Now we're going to graph y equals 4x minus 2 over x minus 1. Sorry about that color. It's kind of hard to see. Uh, but what we're going to do first off is figure out our vertical asymptote because we know that the bottom can't be 0. x minus 1 equals 0. x has to equal 1. So I'm just going to write vertical asymptote x equals 1. Sorry about that. Vertical asymptote at x equals 1. Because if x was 1, then I would be dividing by 0, and that's just not allowed. So I'm going to sketch that in the graph right here, x equals 1. All right. And then for your horizontal asymptote, whenever you have linear on top and bottom, you just take the ratio. So 4x over 1x would be 4 over 1, so y equals 4. 4 divided by 1 is 4. So we put the horizontal asymptote through y equals 4. And so there are your two asymptotes. To get the rest of the points, I'm going to let you use your calculator. So you can look at the table there. One bit of advice in your calculator, um, when you're putting this in y equals, if you don't use the stacked fraction um, thing, then you need to make sure you put this in parentheses because then you're going to do a divided by and then you need to put this in parentheses. Otherwise it's going to mess it all up. So make sure you use your parentheses or your stacked fractions. Okay, so if we look at the table, we can just pull some points off. We've got a point at negative 1, 3. Um, we have 0, 2. I have one error. That's because of the asymptote. I have 2, 6. Um, sorry, I'm running out of space, 3, 5, and then it just goes from there. So let's plot those points, negative 1, 3, 0, 2, and that's two points on this side. That's enough. You can use two points if that's um, really all you can get in the inside of the curve. Just use the best points you can get out of your calculator. And then 2, 6 would be here. And 3, 5 would be here. So there's that side of the curve. And we're good. Our domain is going to be negative infinity to the asymptote at 1, and then 1 to infinity. Our range is going to be negative infinity to our vertical or our horizontal asymptote at th uh, 4, gosh, sorry, and then pick back up after 4 and go to infinity. All right. Okay, so here's one more tricky example. Um, I don't want to graph this one. I just want you to find the asymptotes. What I've done here is I've combined what we just did, a linear divided by a linear, but then I also stuck a little plus one in the, at the end of it. So what I want to do is I'm going to say, okay, my vertical asymptote 
for any situation, no matter what kind of polynomials you have, you always set the denominator equal to zero. So 4x minus 3 equals zero. So we'd add 3 to both sides and divide by 4. x equals 3 fourths. That's your vertical asymptote, x equals 3 fourths. And then to find your horizontal asymptote, I told you when you had linear over linear, you take the ratio here. And if you took 8x over 4x, you would get y equals 2. Um, but here's the thing. This plus 1 in the end, no matter what kind of function we ever have, when you add a number at the end, it shifts it. It shifts the whole entire thing. So if I shifted this up 1, I would actually be adding 1 to my horizontal asymptote as well. So when you have this situation, just remember that the plus 1 applies after we take this ratio. So it would actually be y equals 3. And that's it. That's it for our examples. See, this is what happens when you divide by 0.